This morning as I awakened, I heard this statement. So obviously I got up and started listening and writing and seeking. But I heard the title, I guess you want to say, of today's word is Regenerate My Ways. Regenerate My Ways. Also, I heard just a few minutes ago as we were in worship, everybody needs to hear this, please listen carefully, that things in our lives are not locked in to an inevitable end. Outside of, outside of Jesus. I mean, God has a purpose and plan, but I'm saying that to you without getting on to all, all of you that want to argue theologically about this. It's amazing to me how people are so, so want to fuss about every little thing about, oh, did they believe this? They believe that, all that stuff. You just get out of that. Follow Jesus. Just get some understanding. Anyway, <clears throat> Because I don't know, I don't know of anybody. I've never met anybody that knows everything except Jesus. <laughs> okay. So anyway, here's what I heard, and some of it, Jesus said, "According to your faith, let it be done to you." Now, outside of faith, see, there's things are locked in as far as trying to create a certain end, trying to create a certain end. Things will happen. But everything can change in Jesus. Okay? Don't feel like that, you, that you're locked in. People think of all kind of things. It says, you know, well, everything happens for a reason. You know, that, that is ref- referred to as determinism in philosophical thought. And determinism, that everything is determined, predetermined, and that's it. You're just kind of locked in. It's going to, it's going to be, this is going to be the outcome, whatever. And I'm saying to you that God gives us a different hope and a different voice and a different uh, life if we will believe him. Okay? According to your faith, things can change. It will change if, if you'll hear the Lord. But he said to me this morning that we about regenerating our ways, our desire. In Isaiah 55, it says, Seek the Lord, verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. By, let me just throw this in. Stop putting off the voice of the Lord. Uh, that when you hear the Lord, the time is to just respond. I don't care what you're doing. You need to adjust everything to start responding. <clears throat> Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. Then Verse 9, for the heavens, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher. Better. They're better. Higher in the sense of that which is able to produce life and fruit that's good. My ways produce good fruit, the Lord is saying. It's not that we have a tyrannical God standing there with a big club ready to knock people out and just saying, okay, you know, you need to be doing this. You better be doing this. I know a lot of preachers like to preach like that. And, uh, but the thing is, God is not talking like that to us. Now, he is very stern, but the thing is, why is he saying the things he says to us? Why does the word of the Lord come to us the way it is? And it seems so... And it is eternal. It is absolute. Why is it that way? It's because it is absolute. Because it is the only way that produces life. If I was instructing you to to do a certain thing um, in order to plant a garden, if I said to you, okay, what you need to do is this first. You need to get the, you know, 
get rid of the rocks and roots and grass and everything, and you're going to need to have this ground tilled up. You do that first, and then you've got to work on this is what you do, and you've got to work on the soil, and, and then you've got to make rows and, and everything. How many of you understand? Well, that's just, well, okay. But how many other people sit around theologically, spiritually? Oh, you're not telling me how to plant a garden. I'll do it the way I want to, and you won't get anything. So God is speaking to us because He, he, he feels the effect of what we're do, going through, and He knows that we're fruitless and we're not getting anything and we're not getting blessed. So He sends His Word to heal us and deliver us. The Bible says He sent His Word to heal us and deliver us from our destructions. That's the reason the Word is there. And it is firm because it's the only way that works. The Word word of the Lord, the principles, the precepts, you read all about this in Psalm, especially Psalm 19 and Psalm 119, goes a lot together, talks about the precepts of the Lord and and the statutes of the Lord and the judgments of God and the commandments of the Lord and and all these things are broken down so that we could understand how to receive His Word and live according to the Word of the Lord instead of by what we feel like, what we think and our own opinion and this is the way I want to do it because all of that comes out of a sin nature. Okay? I this. This is a, the sin nature says, I don't want anybody, especially God, telling me what to do. And uh, we see that. And anyway, let me, let me get back to this. So the Lord talks to us here, showing us that our ways and God's ways are different. And the word of the Lord is, has been sent to us. Not only the scripture, but the word becoming flesh in the man, Jesus, the word flesh to dwell, uh, made flesh to dwell among us. He has been sent to us to deliver us from everything that destroys us because he wants to give us life. He wants to give us eternal life and he wants to give us eternal life and then he wants to give us long life in the earth to be his people, to be his witness to be a demonstration of the life of God. The gospel is not a call for us to get ready to go to heaven. It is a call to come to the Lord and come to to be made alive today, to have eternal life and begin to live in that eternal life right now with Jesus as Lord and King of our lives. Now, a lot of people would agree with that and say, okay, yeah, I've done that and I prayed the prayer and, and, uh, and, and I've been baptized and I've joined the church and, and, I'm, and people tell me, I'm trying, preacher. All that tells me is that, you're, that you've yet to enter into the very life that Jesus has called you to. Okay? The world in its darkness... The deep darkness is on people. This great deception is upon upon people. Sin and iniquity is increasing all around us. It's getting very brazen. But the Lord has made a way for us to be saved and have eternal life. Not Not only did He say, did He make a way, He is the way. These are not procedures and steps that you go through to get to a destination. It is a person that we come to, to know Him. And that He's Lord of our life and He leads us in the ways of righteousness. Please hear this. The way we live, our ways are like containers that carry the life we're living. Our ways, our ways, listen carefully, contains the life that we live. I'll repeat this. Our ways contain the life that we live. Somehow, 
people have been so deceived, and I, under, I see that because I, I, and it's come out of the church doctrines and teachings. It's just inferred. A lot of things are caught up and just kind of adapted to in the church world. People pick up all kind of ways and thoughts and everything and feel like, well, it's okay. I mean, whatever. Because I, I prayed, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna go to heaven. I'm okay. These ways are, are okay. Everybody's different in their ways and everything like that. How many hear what I'm saying? That just, but the thing is, when we really come to repentance in the Lord, our ways change. We have to be, re, God wants to regenerate us in our ways. Because our ways, they're like containers. They carry the life that we live. I'm thinking again, I've, I've talked to a lot of people and I feel like that, that, okay, you know, all right, preacher, I know, you know, my ways hadn't changed a whole lot, but I'm still going to go to heaven. Your way, our ways actually reveal the life that we live. It seems to me, and I'm, I'm afraid this has happened, many people want to go to heaven. They just don't want God to mess with their ways. Hmm? But our ways reveal the real life that we have. Again, in dealing with myself and with other people and trying to help, you know, people say, well, that's just the way I am. And I feel like, well, you've just identified that you're living without Jesus. You've just confessed out of your mouth that Jesus is not Lord in your life. Because your ways are revealing something. People say, well, I, I, no, I, I prayed the prayer. I, I, I joined. I'm, all, I'm okay. Because people have been told you can't. Please hear me. People have said, well, you, you, once you do this, you can't lose it. And you, you say, I believe that. I believe you can't lose it. You can't, but your life reveals that you don't have it. This is not an adherence to a doctrine. It's a connection to a person. His name is Jesus. Repentance, repentance bears the fruit of changed ways. You remember when John the Baptist was preaching and they came to him and said, what must, must we do? What must we do? He didn't say, what must we believe? What must we do? Because he told them, bear the fruit of repentance. Real repentance bears fruit of changed ways. Our ways need to be regenerated. Regenerate, recreated, regenerate, re brought to life in Jesus. Our ways, because the Lord said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And I'm calling you to higher thoughts, higher ways. Because my ways work, your ways don't. But people who are stuck running headlong into this brick wall of ways, their ways not working, and their ways, what do they do? Instead of repenting and changing and getting different ways and regenerating in their ways, what they do is they create a teaching that justifies their position. There's all kind of church teachings that justify people living out of fellowship with God. And their ways not changed. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Our ways are containers of the life that we live. Our ways actually reveal the life that, li that is in us. How, how can I, I can't say that any simpler than that. Our ways reveal the life that's in us. Okay, let me just say that again. 
Our ways reveal the life that is in us. Everybody hear that? Now understand, once you can see that, you begin to realize, okay, I need to start interacting with Jesus. I need to have fellowship with Jesus. I need to have the Word of God given to me. I need to start working in this thing called transformation. So that becoming a new person, the Bible says if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed away. All things become new. Not some things, all things. So when Jesus comes to live in us, He gives us new ways. Now we have to grow in those ways. Obviously as babes we have to start growing up and learning the ways of God and learning the the things of God, learning how to walk with God. We have to learn that. But a person really repentant before the Lord wants to do that. A person really born of God wants to know the ways of the Lord. And say, Lord, regenerate our ways. He calls us to himself. I said many people want to go to heaven. They just don't want to change their ways. Which says, basically, I want to believe in Jesus, but I'm going to stay lost. I'm going to stay without Jesus. Because even in that day, the Lord said... Many will call me Lord, but I'll say to them, I didn't know you. What reveals if we've ever been saved, if we ever know Jesus? Our ways change. Do they actually become, please, I've got to get ahead of some people right here. Do you become perfect in all your ways? No, you don't. We we grow, we grow. I understand. Everybody hear that. We've got to grow into that. But your ways change. You don't. A person that's really repentant and realizing my ways need to be regenerated. I need to quit being the way I have been. Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me how to live for you. See, when when the Lord causes us to be born of the Spirit, we come alive, but the Spirit is put in us. The Bible says we're quickened, we're made alive by the Spirit of God in us, born again, recreated in Christ Jesus. His seed is in us. And that seed begins to grow. And we are being made and conformed to the image of Jesus. That is the desire. And the way we actually show that to ourselves is that we uh, let our ways be regenerated. Instead of guarding our ways and defending ourselves and defending the way that we are and the way that we talk and the way that we think and habits we got, instead of trying to defend all of that, the Bible says abandon that. Let God develop in us the ways of the Lord. Everything changes. Everything changes. Our personality changes. Let's get down to the root breath. When a person spends time with Jesus, their personality changes. Because you start taking on some of the atmosphere of of the people or the person you hang with. That's the reason the scripture says that a, a, a righteous person should choose their friends carefully. Because the way of the wicked will lead them astray. And we all go through that. We, we experience things like that. We kind of adapt to things when the group that we're with or the people we hang around with, we kind of pick up you know, their ways and thoughts and act like them because we look up to them and young people do this to older people and start mimicking people, mimicking their ways. <clears throat> and uh, the Lord is calling us to come to connect with Jesus and then we can start mimicking the ways of Jesus and pick up on the personality of Jesus. Pick up, pick up on the ways of the Lord and start living that. Let our ways be regenerated. 
And stop just saying, well, that's just the way I am. Well, that's just, I just, everybody in my, my life, my family, everybody, oh, they had a temper, so I got a temper. That's just the way I, you're just saying, I don't want to be regenerated. That's all, it, that's all, it, it's just an excuse. I understand things affect us. I understand that what we were raised in affects us. Atmospheres that we were raised in was affected. <laughs> I pray that you understand this. Demon spirits are personalities. All right? They're personalities. We are personalities in a physical body. But we're personalities. And if we have a, a lost personality without Jesus, we attract demonic personalities. Are y'all ready for this? You ever wondered why the Lord, why the devils wanted to go into the pigs? You remember that story of the, of the demoniac and when they said, let, cast, let us, you know, they didn't, go, they didn't want to be just wandering around without a body. They said, they got to get in a body. They got to get, they said, get us, send us to the pigs. Because the scripture teaches us that pigs always return to the mud. They do not change their ways. Demons like to get a hold of people that do not change their ways. And so while some people are sitting around defending themselves and their bad attitude and their habit and their weaknesses, all they're really doing are exposing to the fact that demon personalities are driving them in an unchanged personality. Hmm. I'm saying more than most of you are here. <laughs> we like to cast that off on well that's just the way I was raised well it may have been but it's not the way God is raising you that's not the way Jesus is raising us he's raising us as sons and daughters of the Lord most high changing our personality taking on the personality of Jesus and that's expressed in various ways. Everybody's, we're not a cookie cutter people. We're, we're different expressions, but at least it takes on the personalities of the fruit of the Spirit. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control. Those kinds of expressions begin to adapt who our personality changes that we begin to express those kinds of things, not being rude and angry and bitter and self-serving and mad at people all the time and criticizing people all the time and judging people. All, that's not the personality of Jesus. Boy, it's really quiet in here. I'm trying to help us. That's what I'm sharing with you. I'm listening to myself. The old and new do not mix. Jesus taught us that, that the, you don't put a new wine in Old wine bottles. Because in Christ, old things are passed away. Old things. And it says, all things, all ways become new. How's that? Old ways are passed away and all ways become new. Our ways are regenerated and it's what contains the life that we live. It reveals the path. Our ways reveal the path that we're living on. Jesus said there's two ways, two paths. There's a broad path, and then there's a narrow. Narrow in the sense that it's confined to one person. Not the broad way, which mimics all these other people that are lost. But in Christ Jesus, we're made absolutely free to be totally alive because we've narrowed it down to follow the very Son of God, the narrow. Our ways reveal who we're following. What influence is on our life and the path that we're on? Our ways 
reveals the path that we're on. The Spirit leads us into new ways. <laughs> Maybe the reason, and I know we've all experienced this to some degree, so I'm not condemning anyone and passing judgment against you. I'm just trying to help us to understand. If you feel driven in a particular part of your life, it's because the way that you are in that part of your life needs to change. It needs to be regenerated. And we shouldn't say, okay, part of me has changed, but the rest of the part I'm not going to let change. We should, all things become new. All things become new. Let the Spirit help us since all things become new. So that the higher ways of God and the, and the higher thoughts, the better ways, the fruitful ways of God take place in us. The Scripture says that we're, there's a washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Spirit, the washing of regeneration. <clears throat> the more I spend with Jesus, the more I'm in the Lord, the more I'm listening to the Lord the more he's able to wash my innards, as the clampets would say. <laughs> my innards need to be washed. My inside being, my total inside self, my secret parts of my life need to be washed, and it's washed by the Word. It's either going to be washed by the truth or the lie. And we're going to either believe the truth or believe the lie. And if the result of what you're believing creates some kind of rebellion and arrogance against God and against any authority or whatever, and I'm not my own person. I do what I want to whenever I want to. I do what I feel like. All that is just showing that that's of the devil and not God. Oh, but we got teaching that covers that and says, oh, you're okay. You're not okay. Your teaching doesn't save you. It's the person of Jesus that saves you. <laughs> all things become new. Listen to this. Now this is a, this is a, all right, listen. Psalm 55, 19, listen carefully. It says, because they do not change, they do not fear God. There is no fear of God, respect and honor and and submission to the Lordship of Jesus. It's because they don't have that, they don't change. Everybody can change. As a matter of fact, everybody has to change. Let me throw a scripture out that says this, that about the coming of the Lord. It says, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. While that applies to the event of coming of the Lord, that's true. But that also applies to being today. We're all changed in Jesus. And we must allow the Lord to regenerate the ways of our life, the way that we live, the way we talk, the way we look at things, the way we act, our personality, our character to be changed. He changes who we are on the depth, in the depth of who we are. He changes our personality. He changes our character. He changes us as we would draw near to Him. But it says because they don't fear God, they don't change. And if you don't change, you keep attracting to what drives you away from God. The scripture says that if you call to mind the place that you left, you'll have an opportunity to go back to it. It says in Hebrews 11. You'll have an opportunity to return. Some people just come to the Lord and, say, and get prayer. Oh, Lord, oh, save me, save me, change me. Okay, Lord. And, and God touches them in grace. But they 
go back to where they were because they do not change. Because they look back to the way they were. So a lot of people are just stuck in the past. But if you change your ways by the power of the Word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, our ways change, our personality changes, our character changes. Because we have abandoned the old life. We're not trying to improve ourselves. We abandon the old. Flesh and blood does not change, but the Spirit does. Demons inspire people to stay the way they are. That's the reason it looks so good, it looks so promising. Do you realize that a fleshly habit is nothing but an inspiration of a demon on a part that hasn't changed? And if you allow, allow that old stuff to just hang around instead of addressing it in the power of the Spirit of God and the Word of God and, and address that, that's always going to be a place where demon spirits will attack and drive you. It's all around us. The promises of God are not for the old, the flesh. It's for the new man. I heard the Lord say, Stop crying out to make me new. <laughs> that sounds almost contradictory, doesn't it? Listen. He says, Stop crying out to make me new. Change your clothes. God has a whole new wardrobe for us. New clothes. Put on the righteousness of God. Put on the ways of the Lord. And yet people are crying, Oh Lord, just change me, change me. He's not going to change you. Change yourself. Take the initiative to put on new clothes that God has provided. You'll have to understand what I said. And if that offends your theology, just let it offend you. You have to hear what I'm saying. The picture that I got, came to my mind was that, <clears throat> that the Lord, we're in a room with the Lord and there's, there's the, a new set of clothes here that's righteousness, the clothes of righteousness. Or you could call it the armor of God if you wanted to. Or it, the ways of the Lord. It's, whole new, it's a whole new uh, cl- change of clothing. And he says, okay, I, I cleanse you, I bathe you, In my word, I wash you. I forgive you of your sin. Now put your new clothes on. But what have we been taught to do? Oh, no, I've been changed and I'm going to go to heaven, but I don't need to put on new clothes. I don't need to, you know, change my ways. And yet preachers spend all the time trying to get people to change their ways. (laughs) Fussing on people. Change your ways, change your ways, but don't work for it. It's it's such misunderstanding, confusion. Because people are still so self-serving. Self-centered, self-serving. Want to protect themselves. Want to stay the way they are. I don't want to stay the same. I want to be changed every day. That's what Paul was talking about. He said, I died daily with a new man. I'm being renewed every day. I'm... I'm moving on with God. I'm getting new, newer every day. I've been made new and I'm getting newer every day because I'm changing clothes. If I need to change my attitude, change it. Don't ask God, Lord, change my attitude. He says, you change it. You're the one that decides. I give you the ability to. I give you the word. I give you the spirit, but I'm not going to make you do it. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are to participate with the Lord. Faith. Responding to the word that God gives. Obeying the word that God gives me. It's not believing hard. It's, it's, it's responding to the word of the Lord. And it's as personal and new every day. It, <laughs> I, 
right there. Okay, well, I'm through. Listen. If I said to CJ, I want you to come over here with me. Now, he could sit there and believe I said that. Or he could do it. There's a lot of church sitting around believing. Jesus said it, but they, they're not intending on doing it. They're not, their way is not going to change. I am good the way I am. I got the hoops, jumped through. I've done the thing. I did everything they said. I'm, I'm good. Stuck in your old ways without Jesus. True repentance bears the fruit of changed ways. Be ready. Be willing to change. Be willing to have your ways regenerated and given life and put on the new man. Okay? Let's stand up, please. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus that you work in our hearts and our lives, giving revelation and understanding to every heart here, to where we are individually, what we need to do, ourselves, within ourselves, to respond to you, to change our ways, to be regenerated in the ways that we are, to take on the personality and the character and the ways of Jesus, to walk in the ways of the power of the Word and the Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for that. And I ask you to touch everyone here with your great grace in Jesus. Amen.